Walk up offering. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, my you say, not in the name of the Lord to drop your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all in. For you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. God we serve. Angels fly before heaven and earth are tolling. What a mighty God we serve. Can you all stand for prayer? Church, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for all that you have done for us. We want to thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us this past week. Lord, so many things has happened, so many that we have no control of. But you, oh God, you has brought us through. And we put towards all the persons, oh God, 
who have been impacted throughout this week. And we ask that you lift them up and restore them. Lord, we come before you asking for your help for the members among us, dear God. Our pastor, Sister Dawn, all the others who are in shutting, we pray for Sister Stephanie and Sister who has lost their loved one. Lord, we can only depend on you because there is no one else, nothing else who can protect and guide us. Lord, whatever they are facing and whatever they are going through, oh God, I pray that you will touch them even now. Restore them, oh God. Build them up. I pray. Lord, I pray for our security forces, our government, and I pray that they will make all the right decisions as it's pertain, pertain, pertaining to Jamaica land we love. Oh, Father, I pray for each and every one of our ministries in good tidings, and not just good tidings, oh God, but across Jamaica Mennonite Church. I pray, oh God, that you will lift it up, lift up each ministry, their leaders and the members, oh God. Lord, I put towards you even now, each and every one in the congregation, but I pray that where we have fallen, that you will lift us up, oh God. For whatever we don't have, oh God, that you would give according to what you know we need. Lord, I pray some persons are experiencing pain and loss, oh God. I pray that you would touch each and every one of them even now. Lord, we put towards you the offering. And I pray that whatsoever it will be go, going to be used for, oh God, that you will use it accordingly to bring glory and honor unto your name. Lord, I pray for all those who were able to give, and I pray that you will continue to bless them so that they are able to give. I also pray for the persons who are not able to give, and I pray that you will help them to provide a way for them, O oh God, that they may give back to worship you. Lord, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. We want to thank you for your steadfast love, O oh God. There is none like unto you. You are Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are God of the universe. You are, you are our all in all. And for that, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for everything that you have done for us, everything that you are doing in our lives and all that you will continue to do. We give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. Lord, once more, we put our brethren before you, O oh God. We don't know what they're going through, but you do. And I pray that you will comfort them and that you will give them strength and that you will be with them throughout their day and the rest of the week. I also ask, oh God, that you will help us to have a good week in you, oh God. Help us to put away all the hatred and all the strife and all, everything that is not of you. And pray, oh God, that we will, those who do not know you will come to know you as Lord and Savior of their life. Lord, we give you thanks even now again, and we thank you, we thank you, we can't thank you enough, oh God, for all that you have done for us and all that you will continue to do. But we give you praise. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving and love. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Shari. It is... Uh... I have one more announcement. Uh, the announcement is regarding the breakfast. So there is fritters on sale as well. That's for $100. So if you want fritters, you can get fritters and a breakfast there for $500, right? So $500, there's ackee and sawfish. There is liver. Let me just find it real quick. And Hannah, at the same time, just prepare yourself to come. 
So the items that they have are I can saw a fish, kalaloo with liver, and you can get it with any three pieces of food. You can get boiled food, breadfruit, or fried dumpling. And there's also saltfish fritters. All right. So if you want to purchase, you can do so right after church. At this time, I invite Sister Hannah to come and do a poem. After Sister Hannah, we will hear from Sister Kenesha. So I invite Sister Kenesha to make her way to the podium. Good morning, everyone. This poem is entitled Gifts from the Heart. Keeping in line with the theme. Um, and it reads, What can I give to the king above? who showers me daily with mercy and love. Not silver, nor gold, nor treasures untold, but a heart that's pure, a faith that's bold. I'll give him my heart, my life, my all, answering gladly his loving call. A cheerful giver, not out of fear, but out of love for a God so near. My tithes and offerings, though, though small, Though small they may seem, are, see, uh, are seeds of trust in his mighty dream. And my life, a sacrifice, holy and true, each choice I make, I'll give to you. From gifts, four gifts from the heart are what you desire, a spark of love to ignite your fire. So Lord, take my hands, my voice, my days, and use them all for your glory and praise. Did everybody hear the poem? Yes? What was the title? All right, I'm gonna ask you to read it again. Thank you very much, Hannah. And ho hold the mic close. I know we could do uh... Gifts from the heart. What can I give to the king above who showers me daily with mercy and love? Not silver, nor gold, nor treasures untold, but a heart that's pure, a faith that's bold. I'll give him my heart, my life, my all. Answering gladly his loving call, a cheerful giver, not out of fear, but out of love for a God so near. My tithes and offerings, though small they may seem, are seeds of trust in his mighty dream. And my life, a sacrifice holy and true, each choice I make I'll give to you. For gifts from the heart are what you desire a spark of love to ignite your fire. So Lord, take my hands, my voice, my days, and use them all for your glory and praise. Thank you. You go, Hannah. <laughs> yeah, I must set on, sorry. Um, Sister Kanisha? But don't do that to me, don't know. Yeah? Yeah, I'll do it to others, but don't do it to me. All right. <laughs> Let us pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, we thank you for Sister Kenisha. We thank you, dear God, for her willingness and her sacrifice. We thank you, dear God, that you have blessed her and you've blessed her with wisdom to share with others and to edify others. We pray, dear God, that as she speaks this morning, that we will hear from you. And whatever she says will challenge us into action. We thank you for her and we pray that you'll continue to be with her, protect her and guide her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning, everyone. 
So this month's theme is gifts from the heart. Only you can decide. It did not say gifts from your hands or your pockets. Gifts from the heart. Only you can decide. And the scripture reading was taken from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 3 to 9. And just so that it's fresh at the top of our minds, I'll also read it again, this time coming from the NIV version. And it reads, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service, in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urge Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnest, earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in understanding what it means to give from the heart and that only you can decide, I've decided to touch on three points today. And the first one is most important. And it says, we must first give ourselves to God. You cannot sincerely give unless you have given yourself entirely to God. So the heart here is speaking of or will, and this is where we have made up in our mind that we will do what God wants us to do. And this is where we can truly understand what God wants of us and what he says about giving if we truly align our heart with his. So it says, our attitude to giving is a window into the condition of our heart. So you can test the condition of your heart by looking at how you give and your heart posture to give in. So Psalm 24 verse 12 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. This is showing us that nothing we have is ours. Nothing that we think that we have, whether that be your talents, your time, your money, whatever possessions, you do not own it. Or giving is an extension of our submission to God and our dedication to stewardship. So stewardship is when you are obedient in managing, not owning. You are managing and utilizing the gifts and resources God has given us. So in our daily lives, when we look at the things that we have, we are reminded that none of it belongs to us. So if you feel that if you have something, it, your, it is your, it is, it is not. It is the Lord's. And that is the beginning of understanding what it means to give from the heart. So when we begin to give ourselves to God, we begin to care about the things that he truly cares about. Not necessarily the outward things, but the things of our heart. We are able to listen to his will 
and we can truly understand what he wants for us and what he wants us to do. If you have not given yourself to God, then oftentimes giving can feel as if it's a duty or it's a chore or it's something that you feel pressured into doing if you have not truly given yourself to God. And giving yourself to God means accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, continually seeking his guidance, continually asking him to lead the way and to order your steps. That is what it means to give yourself to God. So while outside of Christ, you, you are able to give, yes, but that is not true giving. So once you've understood that you have given yourself over to God, that is the first step in truly giving from the heart. Once you've done that, you will begin to understand that giving is an act of grace. So the grace of God must be known as any good that you will do, of any good that is produced in us, and that is at the heart of everything. Yeah. So if you have truly received the grace of God and you freely receive it, you did not pay for it, then you are ultimately have that mandate to share that same grace. That same grace that is at work in you should push you to give. So it says that because we have freely been given, we should freely give. So the Macedonians in verse 2, it says, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in generosity. So imagine you're extremely poor, but it says that they were rich in generosity. Those things are completely opposite. But in whatever trials that they were facing, they that because they had joy at the heart of it, they were able to give abundantly. They were rich in their generosity. So even though oftentimes we have our own trials and tribulations, whether it be financially, whether it be something else in our lives, we ought to remember that in the midst of that, we are still able to contribute to the aid and to the relief of others. So in the midst of their trials, the Macedonians did not perceive whatever they had as a lack. Oftentimes we think about our lives as we are lacking severely in one thing. They at that time did not think about what they were lacking, but they were rich in joy and they were able to give freely. And you know what that comes from? You can only be able to give knowing that you are in these dire circumstances if you are wholeheartedly trusting in God and trust that he is able to do far more than you can think and that you know that his grace is at work in you. So when you think of your place as a place of lack, then oftentimes you can find where it's hard to give because you're constantly thinking, I don't have this, I don't have that, so I am not able to do this or that. But you are also free from the hold that materialism has on you. So you're not thinking of the material things as the end all, be all. That no longer holds on your life, you are truly able to give beyond what we are, what we think or believe we can give. And that will come entirely on our own, not because someone is urging you and pressing you to give, because you know that everything that you have been given to you is for the edification of the church, as well as it is to bring glory to God. So how do we feel? I know that we've all probably had a time where you've asked somebody to do something and they may have been dragging their feet and you're at a place where you say, no matter, no matter, me no matter what. So we've all been there where we feel as if, yeah, bother somebody for do something, yeah, bother them for give you something and them uh, take too long. So in yourself, you say, all right, you know, but I want it. So just imagine if someone comes up here every week, uh, prodding you, urging you to give. Uh, 
then you are looking at it as that person does not necessarily want to give. And that's not the place that we ought to be as Christians. That is not giving from the heart. That is giving because somebody is expecting it from you and it's going to look bad if you're going to give. That's not giving from the heart. So, and, it, and we're also reminded that our giving is not tied to some expectations that it will lead to something bigger for you, some financial success. Maybe Dream say you want another car, another house. That's not what giving should be. But it should be, it should not be one of treasures for ourselves in this earth because they're temporary. We cannot take it with us. Let's just be reminded that we can't take it with us. But Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21 reminds us that we should lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven, which are everlasting. Nothing that you have on this earth, you can take it with you. So let us remember that thus far we have said that you have to be fully submitted to God for you to be able to give from the heart. And you have to remember that giving is an act of grace because you have freely received and you ought to freely give. And lastly, we have to look to our ultimate example, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. He was rich in all his glory, but he became poor. Born unto poor circumstances. He lived a life that was, that was poor, but this was for our sake, that we might be rich. So you may, so let us think of rich here, which is not our financial or material things that we have, but we are rich in love. We are rich in his blessing and we are rich in his favor and we are joint heirs of his kingdom and we have hope in eternal life. So what greater reason do we need to freely give out of what we have? This reminds us of the small or relative importance of material things, but on the greater importance of spiritual blessings. So let us not hold, let us not be tight-fisted with what God has given us, because remember, we don't own anything. He gives it to us, so we ought to use it. We ought to give it away. So let us not be tight-fisted with what we have. So let us do an evaluation. What is your Heart posture to give in, giving off your time, giving off your resources, whether that be monetary or whatever is, what is your heart posture? Is it that you feel extreme joy to give or are you doing it just because you feel you have to? So let's just remember to give ourselves to God, submit to his will so that he can Show us where he wants us to go. Show us where he wants us to give to others, to share with others. And understand that it is an act of grace. And we should continuously look to Jesus Christ, who has made us rich in so many things, so many spiritual blessings, that it should show us the way and teach us how to truly give from the heart and not out of a place of duty. Thank you.